How are you? Nice to meet you. You too. Gorgeous day as well, which makes a bit of a change. I know it is. The light is really working well for me. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Me, me too. I should also say happy birthday for the weekend. Oh, thanks. Thank you. And what timing that you must have had such a weekend because of course it was your birthday on Saturday and then of course Sunday it's your first yeah. appearance in Beauty Blinders. Yeah and also we filmed those scenes on my birthday last really? year. Really? Yeah so the whole thing was really like kind of um, I guess serendipitous because we, we we'd st already started filming last year in January but actually we filmed those that specific scene when you meet Diana on my birthday a year ago and I don't think it was supposed to be a year later because originally Peaky was meant to come out like about three weeks before it did. And so it's just sort of a coincidence that it got pushed and that the timing ended up being so perfect. But um, yeah, it was a really fun weekend. Um, and I, it was, I was turning 30, which is obviously a really big milestone big birthday. <laughs> so. Oh, what, what a weekend you must have had. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations on what we've seen on your, uh, your performance so far. Thank you. How do you feel to be joining a production when it's in its last season and everybody around you has probably been working together for a number of years? Yeah, that's the thing that made it daunting to walk into because you're just walking into set thinking everyone already knows each other, everyone knows how each other works and I'm, I'm just the new kid. Um, but in a weird way, I think that's quite freeing because it's not the same as if you're all starting a film on the same day and it feels more like your thing you know I think if you're walking into a show that's already so established um, in a way the pressure's off but in a way the pressure's on as well because obviously you want to sort of hold your own with these other amazing actors um, but also it's it's quite relaxing because ultimately it's Tommy's show and we're all just there to um, you know uh, serve different purposes within that kind of universe I guess but it's not sort of like the Diana Mitford tv show sadly um so I didn't really feel I felt like I had permission to just turn up and have fun really um and that was quite nice yeah, and with, with a part like this as well I mean D Diana was one of the Mitford sisters and yeah. she was I it's probably true to say she was pretty much hated because of her her right wing views yeah how did it feel to be approached to play somebody who was so despised generally? Well, as an actor, it's really exciting because I think, you know, I think lots of actors say this, that sort of to play like a baddie role in a way is more fun because, because you get to turn up and just sort of like have fun and not really worry about trying to portray someone who sort of cares about being liked or is, has any kind of level of self-consciousness, you know, Diana just does whatever she wants. Um, and that's really fun to play, you know, polit politics aside, obviously I don't align with her politics at all. Um, but that's the joy of being an actor is that you get to play things that are so far away from what you are. Um, and so I actually didn't really think, I obviously thought about it a lot in terms of the time period and I did a hell of a lot of research, but it was only really when we started to do press and people were kind of asking me, how does it feel to play this really despised character that I thought, oh God, yeah, I need to think of an answer to that question <laughs> um, because I'd only been thinking about it as, as sort of an actor really, um, as just, you know, that was the next job I was doing. And so I kind of threw myself into that, but I, I found the family of the Mitford so interesting um, to research. And I thought there was an interesting mirror image with kind of current events now, because it, you had this family where you had Unity and Diana who were fascists and who were friends with Hitler even, but their second cousin was Churchill. And then you had Jessica Mitford running off with Churchill's nephew to become a communist. And so it's like in this one family you have so many moving parts and so so much sort of polarization politically and I, I thought that was interesting because you know at the moment for instance you know you have families where some people are vaccinated and some are not and that that creates a lot of tension and a lot of uncomfortable conversation I'm sure and um, so it was nice it was interesting to read about and it was interesting to read that that happened sort of you know that was happening 90 years ago and but yet it felt so kind of weirdly current at the same time. So how do you think viewers are going to respond to her? <laughs> um, I hope, I hope well, obviously. 
but I also think in a weird way that if they hate her, then in a, I hope I sort of done my job properly, really. I just hope it's sort of like loving to hate her rather than actually hating me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, her, she's supposed to be there to provoke and disrupt and, and to make everyone's lives just a little bit more difficult. And so I think, I hope that people have a reaction to her because that's kind of the whole point, really. I can't believe that they won't one way or another. I mean, she came <laughs> yeah. across as somebody who just loves to stir things up as much yeah, as yeah. possible. There's a lot more to come as well in the next sort of three or four episodes. <laughs> it's a real journey um, that she goes on, which was really fun to do. Um, but yeah, there's a scene in episode uh, four that I, yeah, I sort of forgot I did it and it's horrific and and now I've just realized it's coming out and that people are going to see it and I'm thinking oh my god <laughs> I can't wait yeah I can't no, wait it, yeah how, how did how did you get on working with Sam Claflin who plays Oswald Mosley I love Sam Sa Sam I, I hope like me is the opposite of his character in the sense that obviously Oswald's you know extremely unlikable and uh, difficult to love and Sam is just the opposite of that he's just extremely easy to get on with and lovely to have around on set and you know he's like a dad and he's just like a really lovely person and so I loved I loved hanging out with him because I read something about him continually singing this Eurythmics song to himself on set. Is that right? <laughs> oh, God. I'm really regretting saying that now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, just, no, no. It's just, you know, you, you days on set are very long and people don't realise, well, some people don't realise that, you know, you're there for like 14 or 16 hours some days and you're up at 4 a.m. And, and so you find ways to past the time like on Emma the film I did before Peaky we were playing games of rock paper scissors we were playing games of fives I don't know if you've ever played fives but it's great and so I think that was just our version on Peaky of like finding a way for the, the time to pass and so we just what kind song of was it? We'd just be singing these songs it was um it was just this one tiny bit from the beginning of a, of a eurythmic song oh, which right. goes um do 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 Ah. That's no more I love you yeah yeah and and yeah. it just became like a weird sort of um tick and we were just it was like you we couldn't stop singing it and I'm sure we became extremely annoying to everybody else on set I'm just wondering if Sam had the same sort of vocal range as Annie Lennox but you know <laughs> <You'd be> surprised <laughs> yeah <laughs> you you mentioned being in Emma and of course in that one you were playing Jane Fairfax and you were working with Anya Taylor-Joy as well yeah. of course is in Peking yeah. um and you were in you know beautiful dresses elegant surroundings I'm, I'm wondering if you're making a little bit of a habit of sort of period costume <laughs> I know I I think actually weirdly these are the two most period things I've done everything I've done before has been a lot more modern um but yeah Anya and I just we need to you know, I, I think it's fair to say that it's obvious that our characters in Peaky and Peaky are not going to be aligned. Um, and I, I, Anya and I are just like, we just need to do something uh, where we play like best friends <laughs> because we keep playing people who are sort of at odds in some way with each other. Um, and we actually really like each other and get on really well. So I think the next thing we do, we need to play people who, who get on well. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe third time lucky then. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, from what you told me, I cannot wait for the rest of the season, particularly now, episode four. Yeah. Because um, I think Diana's going to be an absolute handful. Yeah. <laughs> and she, from your perspective, yeah. she's great because you can really get your teeth into a part like that. Yeah, totally. Oh, my God, it was a gift. Like, <laughs> I, it wasn't even a question. You know, when you ask about the kind of the, the political sensitivity of that role, like... I totally get it and I, obviously I'm, I don't agree with her politics at all but when I got offered that part it was like there was just no question whether or not I would do it because it's just so fun to play someone so kind of shocking and you know irreverent. Yeah well roll on the rest of the series because I can't wait and it's been <laughs> lovely to talk to you really appreciate Thanks. your time. Thank um, you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.